All right, this is fifth grade, module one, lesson 10. And in this lesson, we're gonna be subtracting decimals using place value strategies, uh, number value, number disks, you know, in the place value charts. Uh, the idea for that is we are going to be getting to that standard algorithm, that classic rule of line up the decimals before you subtract. But first, we wanna do that by helping students develop some number sense and understand why that rule makes sense. So here it says to subtract, and you, you, you could use a place value chart if you wish. Now, parents and teachers, particularly teachers, uh, you know, as, as a teacher myself, I always, oh, well, almost always, I guess, um, make my students uh, focus on creating their charts themselves. So I never, I uh, very rarely gave them a completed place value chart. I always make them do it, so they have to, you know, tenth, hundredth, thousandths, and then ones, and then tens, hundreds, like this. And so I always made them, generally made them fill out the place value chart themselves. And then the idea, oh, let's do, um, okay, let's do this one. Um, no, let's we're do one where we have to borrow. Well, no, that's good enough. C. Let's do problem C. So, so C says four hundreds and six hundredths. This is really cool because it helps the kids understand what what it is there, um, what the place value is. It's really kind of important there. And so I'm going to get in my little thick pen and I'm going to say, okay, four hundreds. That's one, two, three, four, and then six hundredths is way back here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's my four hundreds and six hundredths. And then it says to take away three hundredths. Well, that's pretty straightforward. That just says take away three of them. One, two, three. And so what are we left with? Well, we are left with four hundredths and three hundredths. And so if we wanted to fill in the rest of those values, there it is, four hundred and three hundredths. And so what would that look like? It would look like four hundredths and three hundredths. Now this says to solve using the standard algorithm, but parents and teachers, what I thought I'd do first is show you what this would look like using the place value chart and number disks, um, because really uh, everything is going to be predicated on students developing number sense, and we really want them to develop number sense rather than just blindly follow a rule. So uh, I'm going to make my students create this chart tens, ones, and then tenths, and then hundredths. You notice at least I do have a little bit of compassion on my students, and I, I allow them to use shorthand in tenths and hundredths like this on the on the decimal side. I oftentimes make them write it out on the, on the whole number side. I don't know why I do that. Uh, you do whatever you want to do, and that's fine. Okay, so the idea is, first let's model 41 and 84 hundredths using that place value chart technique. So we're going to do four tens, and I'm going to do everything vertical. One, two, three, four. We have one one, and then we have eight tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice I'm trying to create um, like a ten frame here. And then we have four hundredths. One, two, three, four. All right. Now it says to take away nine tenths right here. Nine tenths. Well, we don't have nine tenths. Uh, we only have eight. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this one, and I'm going to circle him, and cash him in. Now when we cash him in, we're going to get over here, we're going to get ten Tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I've cashed him in, so he's gone. He's no longer there. But what this does now is this means I now have enough tenths to take away nine tenths. So I'm going to cross off nine tenths. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so I've crossed off nine of them. And what does that leave us? So that leaves us with the answer, because that's all we had to um, 
subtract. So how many hundredths do we have left over? Well, we still have four hundredths left over. Now, how many tenths do we have? Well, we have these eight plus this one, so that's nine tenths left over. How many ones do we have? We have none, because this guy is no longer a one. He got cashed in. So we have no ones, and we have four tens left over, and there's our decimal. So using the place value chart, the answer is 40 and 94 hundredths. But in this case, they want us to use that standard algorithm. I wanted you to see this, teachers, because it's really important that we let our students understand where all these rules are coming from. It's not just arbitrary. They make sense when you think about it like this. So the standard algorithm, you know, I'm going to write 41 and 84 hundredths. Now, uh, we're going to line up that decimal. Now, why are we going to line up the decimal? Well, because if this says to take away 9 tenths, which one of these columns represents the tenths, and that's this column. So that's why we're going to put the 9 here, and the decimals line up perfectly. So now we're ready to subtract. Over here, it says we have 4, take away nothing. Well, that leaves us with 4. And then here, it says we have 8 tenths, take away 9 tenths, which, of course, we can't quite do right now. So we are going to take this one whole, cash him in, leaving zero, and that's going to give us 10 tenths. So that means instead of having 8 tenths, we now have 18 tenths. And now we can see that 18 tenths take away 9 tenths gives us 9 tenths. And then here's our decimal point. And then we have 0 whole numbers, take away 0 whole numbers, leaves us with 0 whole numbers. And lastly, we have 4 tens, take away no tens, so we end up with 4 tens, and that's the standard algorithm. Again, this says use the standard algorithm. The, this time I will just jump straight to that standard algorithm. However, I'm going to try and use the place value chart vocabulary to kind of hit home what, what we want students to be thinking about when they are subtracting. We don't want them to just think about a plain old boring rule. We really want this to make sense. So first thing I've done is I know that this is a whole number and this is a whole number, so I've stacked them up. This is a tenth, this is a tenth, so I've stacked them up. This is a hundredth and this is a hundredth, so I stacked them up. This really reminds me uh, how important it is that our students memorize that place value chart. I know it's boring, uh, but parents and teachers, let's turn it into a game or something so that our students can really understand um, the place value chart and have that memorized. Okay, so this says we have six thousandths take away nothing. Well, that gives us six thousandths. So here it says we have one hundredth take away five hundredths. Well, we can't do that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go next door. We're going to go to the tenths. And I'm going to take one of those tenths, which leaves us with three tenths left over. And I'm going to cash him in for ten hundredths, which means instead of having one hundredth, we're going to have eleven hundredths. And then 11 hundredths take away 5 hundredths gives us 6 hundredths. 3 tenths take away 2 tenths leaves us with 1 tenth. And there's our little decimal place. And then it says we have 0 ones take away 4 ones. And really, we can look at this and we can say, well, here's 50 take away 4 gives us 46, all right? 50 take away 4 is 46. But if we really want to be laborious <laughs> and really beat this home, we can just continue practicing that, that regrouping concept. So we have 0 ones take away 4 ones. Well, we can't do that, so we're going to go over here to a 10. We're going to cash him in, leaving, with, leaving us with 4 tens. And when we cash in that 10, we get 10 ones. And then 10 ones take away 4 ones gives us 6. And 4 tens take away no tens gives us 4 tens. And sure enough, there's the 46 that we knew about. And so the answer is 46 and 166 thousandths. I chose this problem just because it's kind of written funny. Um, and so what it, what it really does is it says that we need to 
use our place value chart. And I can see that in our place value chart, we go to tenths. So I, I'm going to just go right here, and here's our tenths. Tenths, and then here's our ones, our tens, our hundreds, and I don't know if we're going to need it, but here's our thousands. All right, so now, first thing we need to do is we need to model it. Now, when it says 30 tens, <clears throat> so what does 30 tens look like? Well, that means we're going to have, oh, gee whiz, we're going to have 30 tens. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But the first thing we need to we know we can do is we can cash those in. So if you have 10 tens, you cash it in for 100. If you have another 10 tens, you cash it in for 100. And if you have another 10 tens, you cash it in for 100. So we this whole thing right here really equals 3 hundreds. Now it says to take away 3 tens. So what we're going to have to end up doing is, oh my goodness, it means we're going to take this guy, cash him in. Now, this guy's gone, and this guy is gone because we cashed them in, right? But when we need to cash him in for some tens, so that's going to give us right back those ten tens. All right, so now we end up with two hundreds, and we actually had three hundreds, but we have two hundreds, and then this guy we cashed in for ten tens, so that gives us three hundreds total. So now we're able to cash in. We can subtract. It says take away three tens. So all right, well I'm going to take away three tens. One, two, three. So I've taken away three tens. But now it says we have to take away three tenths. Well, we don't have any tenths now, do we? Uh, they're way over here. So I'm going to have to take one of these guys, this guy right here, this 10. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cash him in, and that's going to give me 10 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 ones. And now that guy's gone. But then I need to take one of those guys and cash it in for 10 tenths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And, uh, and so this guy goes away, and we now have 10 tenths. And now we're finally able to subtract 3 tenths. So when we subtract 3 tenths, 1, 2, 3... And now we have our, we can look and see our final answer. So what do we end up with in the tenths column? We end up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In the ones column, we end up with 9. And then in the tens column, we end up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And in the hundreds column, we end up with 2. And so the decimal is right here. So our answer is 269 and 7 tenths. Now let's take a look at this if we were to uh, do really um, using that standard algorithm. So when it says 30 tens, we know that that already told us that that was 300. And then it said to take away 3 tens and 3 tenths. So that means we're going to take away 3 tenths and 3 tenths. So that's what the problem would look like in standard form. So here's our 30 tenths, which is 300. Take away 3 tenths and 3 tenths. And now we're going to borrow because over here it says we have nothing up here. Take away 3. All right, so we know that this is a decimal and we know that this is a zero. And we have to go all the way over to here. I'm going to take one of those hundreds, which leaves us with two hundreds, and cash him in, and that gives us ten tens. And then I'm going to take one of those tens, leaving us with nine, and that cashes in and gives us ten ones. 
And then I'm going to take one of those ones, leaving us with 9, and cash it in for 10 tenths. We're now ready to subtract. So 10 tenths, take away 3 tenths, leaves us with 7 tenths. 9 tenths, take away nothing, leaves us with 9, uh, did I say 9 tenths? 9 ones, take away nothing, leaves 9 ones. Now we have 9 tens, take away 3 tens, equals 6 tens. And then lastly, 2 hundreds, take away no hundreds, leaves us with 2 hundreds. So using the standard technique, we end up with 269 and 7 tenths, which is exactly the same answer we knew all along using that place value technique. Now this one I'm not going to solve in an in its entirety. I just wanted to highlight the fact that it says use a tape diagram. Now, there's no magic. There's no single one way to draw a tape diagram to make this work. I'm going to show you one quick way. Now, it says clipboard. Right here, clipboard costs $2.23. So I'm going to put C for clipboard, and I'm going to draw a bar. And this bar represents $2.23. All right. Now, it says it costs 58 cents more than a notebook. All right. So we have a notebook, and the bar for the notebook is shorter. And we know exactly how much shorter it is. It is shorter by 58 cents. All right. So first thing we need to do is we need to figure out, well, how much does a notebook cost? So we're going to get that by using subtraction. This is the classic view of a tape diagram that suggests subtraction. So we're going to do 223, and we're going to subtract 58 cents. That'll tell us a notebook. And then we can then figure out how much two clipboards and one notebook costs, and then we can figure out how much change we would get with our $10 bill. But I really wanted to just highlight what would a tape diagram look like, and here is one example of what a tape diagram might look like. Whoo-wee, and that wraps up a long one. That's fifth grade, module one, lesson 10, subtracting decimals.